Okay, Boker Tov, today's Daf Yomi is Kasubos Daf Chav Hey, Kasubos 25. Let's, let's be, let's start on the bottom of 24B where the Gemara wants to know the question. Uh, we're going to start around 10 lines from the bottom of 24B. The Gemara wants to know the question of whether or not you could be Malin, meaning you see us Kapayim Yosin, if you see a Kohen doing the Birkas Kohanim, if you see somebody doing the Birkas Kohanim, can you assume that they are that they are a calling on that basis? So are we going to allow the person then to get married as though they were a calling? We will assume that they're that they have all the privileges of lineage associated with marriage associated with a calling. So the Gemara says, so the Gemara cites a Bryce about this. The Tanya Rabiosi Omar Gedoa Chazaka Rabiosi says. Great is the the status of presumptive status is so great for the states in in, in the verse in Ezra it says b'nei hakohanim b'nei chaviya b'nei hakohutz b'nei barzilai asher lakach libenot barzilai hagiladi isha mikarei al shemam. With the names of the kohanim who came up from Babylon and it says elu b'kshu k'savam hamet yachasim they they looked for their names written down, the lineage of Elunim Tzu, and they did not discover them, and they were exiled from the Kuna, meaning to say they did not allow them to be listed as Kohanim. And Hatir Shasa, that's another name for Nehemiah, said to them, they cannot eat from the Kodesh HaKodeshim, i.e. from the, the sacred foods of the temple, until they stood before the Kohen in the Urim Vatumim. So until that point, they're not going to be able to eat. So Amr Lahem, so Hatir Shasa said to them, He said to them, you are going to be in the same presumptive status until what you, that, that which you were when you were in the diaspora. Because just like in when you were in the in the exile in Babylon, you ate from the kodeshag pool, i.e., the food of a kohen that's eaten outside the temple in Jerusalem. That's the truma. I've come to So to now also you could eat from the kodeshag pool, which is the truma. The isal kadaitach, and presumably also they're doing the birkas kohenim as well. So therefore. You're, you're going to see them doing the Birkos Kohanim. And if you would be of the position that you're able to elevate somebody when you see them doing the Birkos Kohanim to marriage as a Kohen, Hani, keeping the Parsi Yadayo, since these people are are doing the Birkos Kohanim, we're go, we might come to elevate them. So don't we see from here that we don't elevate them on their lineage on the basis of them seeing the Birkos Kohanim? Where it says no, Shani Hachan. In this case, is unique because the Reya Chazkayo, because they anyway have a have a, their Chazaka, their presumptive status is weakened because they're not eating from the Kachin, from the sacred food of the temple. The Elotei Ma'achi. Because if you wouldn't say this, Mandam or Malo Matrimal Yuchsin, according to one it says you would raise them up from just seeing them eat the Truma to the lineage. Keeping the Achel Truma, Once you see them eating the Truma, you might come to elevate them. So El so it must be that what's the reason we don't elevate them? Mishum because here we have a presumptive status that is weakened. So now on the top of 25a, the Gemara asks the question, well, if that's the case, El So what's the what's the why did, what does the price of mean when it says your chazaka is so great? So the Gemara says what we mean when we say your chazaka is so great is originally. That they were when they were in Babylon, they were able to eat Chuma de Rabbana, rabbinic Chuma. But Hashem, but now that they've come to to the land of Israel, they've come up. We're going to allow them to eat Chuma de Rabbana. On the basis of their Chazaka, we allow them to eat the biblical Chuma. You buy the same, or alternatively, Hashem Nali with Chuma de Rabbana Nacho. Or alternatively, now we still allow them to eat the rabbinic Chuma, but the Chuma de Rabbana will Acho. But they are not allowed to eat the biblical Chuma. So what is the Gedolah Chazaka? And when we allow them to go up from truma to lineage, that's but truma de raisa, but the, that's only by biblical truma. And so, but here, since they're eating truma de rabbanan, since they're only eating the rabbinic truma, so therefore we wouldn't allow them to go up. Uh, so if that's the case, 
the 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 so even though we could make a, 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 we might have thought to make a decree from Truma de Rabbana to Truma de Rice that we wouldn't allow them to eat the forbidden Truma because then they might come to eat the biblical Truma. We don't make that, or we might, we don't make the decree. And we might have thought that if we see them eating the rabbinic Truma, we're going to elevate them to biblical, to lineage. We might have thought we wouldn't, know, we wouldn't allow them to eat that. We don't make that decree. Mara says if the Truma de Rice are awful, but there are they really not allowed to eat the biblical Truma? It says in that verse in answer that they're not allowed to eat from the Kodesh Hashem from the most sacred food. Doesn't that mean the Kodesh Hashem who do all that from the most sacred food? That's what they're not allowed to eat. How with Truma de Araisa Aho, but with the biblical Truma they are allowed to eat. So doesn't that mean that these Kohanim who came up are allowed to eat the biblical Truma? Mara says no. Hachikamer, this is what it means. Well, but maybe the Ikra Kodesh they can eat from those things. That are called Kodesh. Rashi says, i.e., the Chuma. Kodesh. That that these Kohanim were not allowed to eat the Chuma. And they're not allowed to eat from those things that were called Kachim. What are those things called? What are those things that are called Kachim? That's a reference to the Chaz of the Shok, the breast and the thigh of the Shlamim that were typically allowed, they were gifts to the, the Kohuna that they were allowed to be eaten by the wives and the slaves of the Kohanim. It says, and this is a reference to the Gemara that we had in Yavamos, that it says that the daughter of a Kohen, once she marries an, a non Kohen, then even if she, if her husband dies and she goes back to her father's home and she's allowed to eat from the Truma, but she's not going to be allowed to eat from these gifts of the Kuna, the Chaz and the Shok, as it states. That she can't eat from those things that were that were gifts of the kahuna. So the Gemara still wants to know this question. We're still trying to figure out the answer to this question. Are you allowed to elevate somebody from the if you see them doing the priestly blessing? Are you allowed to assume that they're a kohen in terms of lineage? So the Gemara says, Tashma Chazaka Kahuna, what's going to be a presumptive status for a kohen? If you see them doing the priestly blessing in Babylon, or if you see them eating the chala, the chala is one of the 24 gifts of the to the Kohen. That was they, they saw them giving the dough to the Kohen, and you see them eating it in, in Syria. Or if they divided up the or they gave the Zero and the Chaim, these are two of the 24 gifts of the Kohen, the, the forearm and the, the, the jawbone, i.e., let's say the tongue. Of the animal, you saw them giving that to the Kohanim in. Uh, I lost my place for a second. The Chiluk Matanas Bekrachan in the cities. So Kantani Mios, but doesn't this source say the Sias Kapayan? And if you see them doing the priestly blessing, that it's going to be considered a Chazaka. My Rav Yosin, isn't that enough to say, oh, okay, we've seen them doing this, and now as a result of this, we are going to allow them to get married as though they are a Kohen. Mara says, no, with Shuma. No, it's a Chazaka to say that they can eat Shuma. Mara says, but it can't be. But Isn't it similar? Are we comparing it to the presumptive status? It says, and it's, uh, and it's, it, it's, it's stated in the source that it's, it's a presumptive status if you see them eating Chawa in Syria. And just like if you see them eating the Chawa, that's going to allow them to get married. Also, the, the priestly blessing is for Yochsin. For lineage, the Gemara says no. Lo achilas gal chala kufa huachuma. The achilas chala is teaching us itself that it's a chazaka. If you see them eating chala, that's a chazaka that they can eat chuma. Hasavar chul chala b'zman azad the rabbanon. So the presumptive status is that you see them eating the chala nowadays, which is rabbinic. Huachuma de araisa, and the chuma is biblical. Umaskina and michala the rabbanon huachuma de araisa, and we see them. We see, and we we're going to elevate them from eating the chala the rabbanon to the truma, which is biblical, and so therefore, that's what we're going to allow them to do. So the Gemara says, and this is going to be like the position that Rafuna Braid Rav Yeshua taught 
for Rabbanan that he reversed the position of the Rabbanan. And we're going to see what that means on the bottom of the page. So therefore, the Gemara is saying it's not a presumptive status to allow you to elevate from priestly blessing to getting married. It's just to allow you, if you see them eating the chawa, the chawa if you see them eating the chawa, which is the rabbinic nowadays, that's going to allow you to eat the truma, which is biblical. So the Gemara is still trying to answer this, answer this question, whether or not you're allowed to elevate somebody from Birkos Kohanim to to marriage. So the Gemara says, Tashma chazaka l'kuhuna. What's the presumptive status for a kuhuna? Nesiyos kapayim v'chilu koranos b'aretz Yisrael. And if you see them doing that priestly blessing or the dividing or the giving out of the priestly blessings, uh, the priestly gifts at on the threshing floor in the land of Israel, and, and also in Syria, and any place where the agents were sent out to tell you it's Rosh reach. So we see from here, the Sius Kapayim is a raya. Of a, in all those places, the Sius Kapayim is a proof. In all those places where the, where the agents of Rosh Chodesh reach, in all those places, the priestly blessing is a proof of a little Quranos. But there, they didn't give out the truma because they were outside the land of Israel. So therefore, the Chil Quranos is not a proof in those places where the agents where the agents reached. And Rashbag Omer, Af Alexandra Shamatrayim. Uh, Rashbag says, even, even Alexandria and Egypt, Rishona, that at first, when they should base in Kavun Sham, that that because because the court was established there, so also in those places that will be enough to establish a chazaka, like the place where the agents reached. So that there, the priestly blessing would be enough to establish establish it as a chazaka. So katani mias. So we see that this source states in the seals kapayim that the priestly blessing is enough to establish a, a chazaka that you're a kohen. My love, isn't it for what you'll sin? Isn't it to say that you're calling for marriage purposes? Or says a little chala. No, it's just to tell you that you can get the chala. That's what the Kohen, that's what it's telling us. But the Muslim said, Dimya the Chil Karanos Katani. And so, but doesn't isn't it similar to the giving out of the truma, the threshing floor? And Ma'a Chil Karanos, just and aren't we saying that just like the Chil Karanos is a presumptive status, Lu Yochsin to allow you to get married, Abnasi is Kapayam Lu Yochsin. So too, the priestly blessing is a presumptive status to allow you to get married. And I said, no, that's not what Chil Koranos is a presumptive status for. Well, Chil Koranos Kufa Lechala. No, the Chil Koranos, the dividing up of the Truma, is itself a presumptive status to allow the coin to get Chala because this is the exact opposite position of what we just saw before. The Savar Truma Bizman is according to this position in the Brisa. They say Truma nowadays is rabbinic. The uh, Chawa de Raisa, Chawa is biblical. Maskina mi Truma de Rabbana, the Chawa de Raisa. And if we see you getting the Truma, the Chil Karanos, the rabbinic Truma, we're going to elevate you and allow you to get the Chawa, which is biblical. And exactly like Rav Yeshua, Rav Huna, the son of Rav Yeshua, found the Rabbana, the Amar Huna, the Rav Yeshua, Ashka Chatino, the Rabbana, the Bey Rav. He found the Rabbanan in the academy of Rav, the Yasuri Ka'amri, and he said, I feel man the Amr Truma Bizman is the Rabbanan, even according to the position that says Truma nowadays is rabbinic, Chawa, even according to that position, Chawa de Raisa. So this Chawa is biblical. So we see from here, according to this position, that Truma is rabbinic and Chawa is biblical. And so therefore, if you have a Chazaka that you're getting, that you're eating the Truma, that'll be enough to establish you, for, to elevate you to get the biblical Chawa. And how do we know this? The Chawa is biblical and Truma is rabbinic. Shaharei Zayin Shekibshu, Zayin Shekholku, Nesrai Vubachawa, Nesrai Vubachuma. Because the seven years, during the seven years that they were conquering the land of Israel, but before, but before they actually <coughs> divided out the land, they were, ob- uh, uh, um, they were obligated in the midst of Chawa, but they were not yet obligated in Truma. And I said, so when well, this is Rev. Luna Bray, the Rav Yeshua found the Rabban in the Bay Rab, and he said, I said just the opposite. And this is like the first price that we, we said above this price. And I said just the opposite. Even according to the position that says that Truma nowadays is biblical, Chawa is the Rabban, and Chawa is rabbinic. How do we know this? When you come into the land, how do we know Chawa is rabbinic? And Truma is biblical because it says about the mitzvah chala that you have to do the mitzvah when you come into the land. If it's when you come in, 
Shnayim Shloshim Aragvam. I might have thought when the two or three spies came in at the beginning of the book of Joshua, I might have thought already you're obligated in the mitzvah of Chala. Tama Lomar Bevoachem Bevias Kuchem Amarti Vos Bevias Mitzaschem. You're only obligated in the mitzvah of Chala when all of you come into the land, not just when a portion of you. Chiaskinu Ezra, and when Ezra elevated them. And when Ezra came back, Rav Kul is Salak. Not everybody came back. And so therefore, they were only rabbinically obligated in the midst of Chawa. And so what that first price is telling us that if you get them, if you get Chawa, if you see the Kohen Yen of Chawa, it's enough to elevate him from the, the rabbinic status of Chawa to the biblical status of Truma, because that's what the Chazak is teaching us. It says the Bryce is like we're still trying to answer this fundamental question. Is the priestly blessing... Uh, if you see the Kohen giving the priestly blessing, is it enough to allow them to get to? Is it enough to allow them to get married as a Kohen? Tashma Chazaka Lekohuna Nesius Kapayim Mechil Gronos Veedus. So the Brisa states, what's the representative status of the Kohuna? If, you, if the person has a Chazaka Lekohuna, that we're going to say Nesius Kapayim is if you see them doing the priestly blessing or getting the Truma Mechil Gronos Veedus, or if you have testimony, that's a Chazaka for the Kohuna. Where it says this doesn't make any sense. Edus chazaka he. Why are you saying that the testimony, if you have witnesses, that that's a presumptive status? That is proving it. That's not a chazaka. That's evidence. So this is what the Bryce is saying. The priestly blessing is like witnesses. Ma edus So just like witnesses is enough to establish lineage to get you to allow you to get married. So too, the priestly blessing is enough to allow you to get married. So isn't this a proof, therefore, that Messias Kapayim is enough to allow you to get married? As a Kohen says, no. Whoa, No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying if you have testimony that comes based upon a presumptive status, that's going to be the equivalent of a presumptive status, and that's going to allow you to get married as a Kohen. And the Gemara gives a couple of examples of this now. There was a person who came in front of Rabbi Ami. So this person came in front of Rabbi Ami and he said, and and they said to Rabbi Ami, he said to Rabbi Ami, I know for sure that this person is a Kohen, I have presumptive status. So Rabbi Ami says to him, he said, what did you see to establish that he's a Kohen? So I saw him get the first Aliyah in the shul. That's what he said. I saw, the, um, so I saw him get the first Aliyah in shul. That proves that he's a Kohen. So the Gemara says, but wait one second. Um, so he says, but when you saw him get the first Aliyah, he says, was that because he was a Kohen or maybe he was just the greatest person there? Maybe he was a Gado. And we, Gemara, we know Rashi reminds the Gemara gets in the Testament base, 59b tells us that even though Rab was not a Kohen, since he was the Gado Ador, they gave, him the, they gave him the first Aliyah. So maybe this guy was the Gado of his, of his Yeshua, he was the greatest person of his settlement, and that's why they gave him the Kohen Aliyah. He wasn't necessarily a Kohen. So the says, no, Shekar Achor of Levi. And, no, we saw a person who was a Levi get the Aliyah after him. And Rashi explains, if he was not a Kohen, then a Levi would, never, would not read after him. Because we see in Mesechus Gittin, that if there's no Kohen, Nisbar Dachavio, the basket is broken. So if you give the first Aliyah to a non-Kohen, and you would not give a, le- a levy to a play in the second a le- levy. Uh, and so that's why, and so therefore, from the fact that this person gives the second uh, aliyah to a levy, it means that the first person was obviously a Kohen. And Rashi then gives a second shot, which everybody should should remember this, because whenever there's no Kohen in the in the minion. Yesh Mefarshim says Rashi, Nisparda Chavio, that what does it mean when if there's no Kohen, Nisparda Chavio, the basket is is broken. It means Shebem Makom She'en Kohen, that if there's no Kohen, if if you want, you can call a Yisrael before the Levi, then you could call him. And that's only where there's no Kohen, but where there is a Kohen, then you could not allow to call a Yisrael as a number two before the Levi. And so here in this case, there was another Kohen. So therefore, if we're not for the fact this person was a Kohen, then the Levi would not have called second. So we see from here that if there's no Kohen, you you can call the Israel before the before the second person. That's literally what you can do. You can call the Kohen before the second. If there's no Levi, you could call you call the Kohen twice. But if there's no Kohen, 
you could call the Levi first, or you can call the Yisrael first. But what you can't do is give the first Aliyah to Yisrael and then the second Aliyah to a Levi. That's not allowed. So if there's no Kohen, you could give the first Aliyah either to a Yisrael or to a Levi, but you can't give the first Aliyah to Yisrael and the second Aliyah to a Levi. So Rabbi Ami said, well, it's from the fact that this person got the Kohen Aliyah and the second person was a Levi. That must mean that this first person was a Kohen. Where it tells us that Huda also coming to Rabbi Levi, there was another evidence, another story of a similar thing. There's a person who came in front of Rabbi Shuba Levi and he says, Mukhuskani Baza Shulevi. He says, I know for sure that this guy is a Levi. On my way. So they said to Rabbi Shuba Levi, Mara Isa, why do you know that he was a how, how do you know that he's a Levi? I'm away Shakar Shani Babesa Knesses. No, I saw him get the second Aliyah in the synagogue. So the first Aliyah went to the Kohen, and the second Aliyah went to the Levi. But they said, wait. How do you know that he's a Levi? Maybe he was just a Gadol. He was just a great person. That's why we gave him the second Aliyah. It says, no, Shekar was fun of Kohen. No, the first Aliyah went to the Kohen. And if it were not for the fact that he was a Levi, they wouldn't have called him second, but they would have called him third. Because, uh, because we would have said that Kohanim read before him, and he's the third one. Because we say Mesech HaSkitin, if there's no Levi, and a Kohen reads in his place. So from the fact that he was getting the second Aliyah, that proves that that he was either a Kohen or a Levi, but and but but he could have been a Kohen, but we said we learned from here that he's a Levi. So, so uh, who the also coming to Reish Lakish? It was a person who came in front of Reish Lakish. He says, I know for sure that he's a Kohen. I'm only Mara Isa. He says, how do you know for sure he's a Kohen? I'm only Shakar Risham Basic Nessus. He says, well, I saw him, I saw him getting the first Aliyah in the synagogue. I'm only Reisa Shachil of Agranos. So when Reish Lakish, uh, so this person came before Reish Lakish and he says, I saw him, uh, I saw him getting the first Aliyah. And, and Reish Lakish said to him, yeah, but that's not enough. Did you see him also getting the truma? With the, did you go down to the field and you saw them giving him the sacred food, the truma? So, so that's what he said. So I'm a Rebel Lazar. So Rebel Lazar says, let's say there's no field. Let's say, there's, let's say you're in, uh, in, in the middle of Tel Aviv. There's no farm there. I mean, Shem Gorin, Batla Kuhuna. So if you don't have evidence that you know, you're not at the farm, are you going to say that he's not a Kohen? Uh, so, so Rebel Lazar rejected what Rish Lakish said. He says, you need to have a farm. You, 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 that's not evidence. That's the absence, evidence from the absence of, uh, that's evidence from silence. And we're not going to prove that he's not a Kohen because we didn't see him in the field. We saw him getting the Aliyah. That should be enough. Indeed, the Gemara says, Zimnin have a yas, they come into Rabbi Yochan. And then another time, Rabbi Yochan and Rish Lakish were, were sitting together. And also, Rabbi Lazar, we'll see from the end of the story. And the same thing happened. There was a guy who came in front of them and they went to know if he was a Kohen. And somebody said, so somebody said, we saw him. Um, Get the first Aliyah. But Rish Lakish said to him, Did you also see him getting the food in, getting the truma in the field? So, now, before it was Rebbe Lazar, he said in his own name. But this time, Rebbe Yochanan said, Rebbe Yochanan was, was a Talmud Chavar of, of, of Rish Lakish. But he was not a Talmud, he was like a Rebbe Chavar. He was a teacher of Rish Lakish. Rish Lakish was Chavrusa. Rebbe Yochanan was like his Rebbe. And so this time, Rabbi Yochanan said what Rabbi Lazar had said before, and it became clear that Rabbi Lazar had heard the exact Russia, the exact language from Rabbi Yochanan. That's how he knew to say it like that. Rabbi Yochanan said to Rish Lakish, if there's no, if there's no field, they're going to nullify the Kahuna. So Hadar Hadar Rabbi Lazar Bishus. So Rish Lakish was very upset with Rabbi Lazar. He said, Shamas Mili de Barnavcha vo Amar Las Mishmei. So you heard this teaching of Barnavcha, and you didn't, and you didn't. Quote it. You, why don't you tell me this from Rabbi Yochanan? I would have taken it much more seriously. You remember the Gemara Yavamo says that that they said to Rabbi Lazar that, that everything you say we know comes from the Rebbe. So so we should have remember that Gemara that in the bottom of the page there in in Yavamo's on Amma Beis. So where where he was very upset. So he should have known. We should, so Rabbi Yishlaker said, you should have told me it was it was from you. But Rabbi Lazar said, us, you you should have assumed that everything I said comes from Rabbi Yochanan. So the Gemara says, Rebbe v. Rebbe Chia, another case, Chad Hawa ben al Piyavavu Kahuna, Chad Hawa ach al Piyavavu Kahuna. One allowed a, a brother, a son, to be elevated to the Kuna on the base of his father's testimony. One allowed a brother to be elevated to the Kuna on the base of his brother's testimony. 
to the Levia to become a Levi on the basis of his brother's testimony. Mar says this time the Rebbe had a ben api other will go now. Let's assume that Rebbe was the one who elevated his his the son on the basis of his father's testimony. The Kohen, the Tanya, Reisha, Baba, Amar, Beniza, the Kohen. Who, if he says, "This is my son," and he's a Kohen, Nema Lachi will be Truma, but Eno Nema Lasio Isha. We believe him to feed him Truma, but not to, to not to allow him to get married. That's the position of Rebbe. Amar Lor Rebbe Chia, Ema Tama Mino Lachi will be Truma. If you believe him to eat the Truma, Tamino Lasio Isha. You should also believe him to allow him to get married. If you don't believe him to allow him to get married as a Kohen. What time you know about Truma? Then don't believe him to eat the Truma. Why are you splitting it? So Rabbi says, I'm on my way. Rabbi says to Rabbi Chia, his student, I mean, the reason why I trust him to feed Truma is the father has the Truma. He can anyway give it to him on his own. And there's nothing stopping him. But I don't trust him to marry a woman because on his own, he wouldn't be able to arrange this marriage. To stay him. So let's assume that Rebbe, therefore, is the one who allowed who believed the son on the basis of his father's testimony that he is a that he is a Kohen to feed him the Truma. From the fact that Rebbe elevated the son on the basis of his father to the Kuna, Rebbe Chia elevated a brother on this basis to be a to 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 be a Levite on the basis of his brother's testimony. Why doesn't he trust this, a father trusting a son? Karvu ate so of it. Because we're saying he's a, he's a relative of his father. So therefore, so he's disqualified. Well, if that's the case, Achnami Karvu ate so of Well, why do we believe a brother? He's also a relative. Mara explains the Messiah of Itimo. No, he spoke innocently. He just spoke on Pasan. And and the Gemara is going to give an example of a Messiah of Fitumo in a, in a moment that's on the top of 26a, where you accept testimony because it was given. Um, Passant, it wasn't given, it was just given as naively and without testifying it completely. So we'll pick that up tomorrow.